This is our second video in the UCSC Genome Browser tutorial, and today we're going to talk a little bit about tracks. So let's head on over to the Genomes tab and enter a gene, hexokinase 1. If you recall from biology class, hexokinase 1 is an enzyme in the glycolysis metabolic pathway. Glycolysis is perhaps the most important metabolic pathway, not just in human cells, but in almost all cells on Earth. Let's go to hexokinase 1. So right away we see that hexokinase 1 is a gene that's over 100,000 base pairs long. Wow. And uh, furthermore, we see that hexokinase 1 has multiple isoforms. Now, if you recall from biology, a different isoform of the mRNA can come about through, let's say, alternative splicing, or an alternative promoter, or alternative start codon, or even alternative polyadenylation at the end of the gene. Uh, in any case, there is certainly more than one way to express the hexokinase 1 gene. Uh, now, you might be noticing that there are appear to be even more isoforms, and this will lead us into our discussion of tracks, because in fact, uh, there is a significant amount of redundancy between the RefSeq gene track up here and the UCSC gene track down here. In fact, you can see that RefSeq is one of the components that goes into UCSC genes track. Uh, so these two uh, green boxes that get highlighted one at a time, they are called tracks, and they are kind of the building blocks of the UCSC genome browser. Uh, so to get rid of this redundancy, why don't we just hide the UCSC genes track? There we go. It's gone. And why don't we zoom in to see some more detail in the hexokinase 1 gene. So you'll see that uh, the exons of this gene are very, very small compared to the introns. In fact, when we were out at the entire gene, the exons kind of look like slippers, but don't worry, they're still there. And so in addition to this genes track, which we already have some experience with, you will see several other, maybe even more than what you see here on, on my browser, you'll see many other tracks below the genes track. And I'm going to go through a few of these and hopefully teach you how to get comfortable with, with any track you should encounter. So the first track that we see below uh, the genes track is called repeat masker. Uh, in the genome, there are lots of repetitive, kind of boring sequences, and repeat masker highlights the location of those sequences in black. Now, in the introns, that's where you'll find the most repetitive sequences because uh, the introns aren't don't need to be. Uh, carry the information to code for proteins. So repetitive sequences are perfectly allowed there. And the biological reasons for them are quite interesting, but unfortunately perhaps beyond the scope of this video. Uh, so beyond the repeat masker, I also have the, uh, the vertebrate conservation track open. So in this little, uh, I guess it's a histogram, you can see the relative conservation of each nucleotide letter in the in this part of the hexokinase 1 gene. And wow, uh, you can see right here at the exon, there's a huge spike in conservation among the 100 vertebrates that this track references. What does that mean? Well, uh, this, th this plateau represents the fact that among the vertebrates, uh, the, the nucleotide letters in this exon are highly conserved. That is usually an indication that they're biologically important. And for hexokinase 1, uh, it's certainly biologically important to uh, conserve the sequence and have a functional protein. Uh, so uh, further down in this vertebrate conservation track, you can see that the amount of conservation uh, between these vertebrates and humans depends on the organism. And as you would expect, Organisms more related to us, like rhesus monkeys, which are primates, humans are also primates, they have a lot of conservation, uh, which is indicated in black, 
Whereas, let's say, the zebrafish, which is separated from humans by hundreds of millions of years of evolution, well, it's still awfully conserved at the exon, but the introns have drifted away uh, quite significantly for zebrafish. So, as far as this uh, vertebrate conservation goes, uh, just remember the black indicates uh, conservation, whereas the white means that the nucleotide has been mutated uh, somewhere along in the past hundreds of millions of years. Uh, finally, let's go down to the common SNPs track. Now the common SNPs track, unlike the vertebrate conservation track, the common SNPs refers solely to human beings. So you can see that even among human beings, each one of these marks indicates that it's fairly common for two human genomes to disagree about the letter. The disagreement has to occur in around uh, over 1% of, of people. And I think that that makes me feel special because no two humans have the same genome, perhaps identical twins, but even there, we will see that there are differences. Um, anyways, these are the tracks that I have open on my genome browser. You might see different ones if you're on the genome browser right now. And I can assure you that there are many, many more that I'm not showing you. So, and here's a, a comprehensive list of all of those tracks. Why don't we open one and just get a sense of, of what it will show us. So why don't we go down here to the TS microRNA sites and display that track. We seem to see absolutely nothing on this microRNA track, and that makes perfect sense because we're in the middle of a gene, and microRNAs tend to lie uh, at the end of a gene. So why don't we zoom out, let's say, 100 times. Takes a little while. Oh, that was probably too far. Here's our hexokinase gene. But anyways, let's uh, highlight that hexokinase gene. Come on. And try to investigate what the microRNAs track has to say about our hexokinase gene. So down here is the microRNAs track. It is almost entirely empty, except here at the end, lining up with the 3' UTR, we see two different microRNA sites. What is a microRNA site? Just a quick refresher. A microRNA is a small piece of regulatory RNA that will uh, bind to the mRNA of hexokinase 1 and likely lead to the degradation of that mRNA. So these uh, microRNAs, or MIRs, as you can see, M-I-R, they are important in regulating the expression of genes, including hexokinase 1. Uh, now there's, I like microRNAs, but you can see that there are perhaps hundreds more tracks, and I strongly encourage you to, to try them out and to, to see what you can learn about the genome through all of these different lenses. And that, that's why I love tracks so much, because you, you'll always find something new and something cool. And uh, that's just one feature that makes the UCSC Genome Browser such a powerful tool. Uh, so. That concludes what I want to say for this video. I encourage you to look at as many tracks as you can and really try to understand what they mean biochemically and also biologically. Why has the genome evolved to behave in this way? And uh, I will see you in the next video.